Hey guys, Mr. Klein here, uh, talking about Chapter 2, Lesson 2 of your textbook, Earth's Interior. So let's go ahead and let's get started. Uh, by the end of this lesson, you will be able to answer the following questions. Number one, what are the interior layers of the Earth? And question number two, what evidence indicates that Earth has a solid inner core and a liquid outer core? So let's get started with your notes. Uh, people for centuries and millennia have wondered what's exactly in the middle of our planet. Uh, people have written books, they've made movies, Journey to the Center of the Earth, okay, that crazy movie with Will Ferrell, if you remember that, uh, where they go down to the center of the Earth. None of that is true, okay? Sorry, hate to break it to you, but the center of the Earth isn't like that. That's not to say that we haven't been able to figure out what's going on down there. And scientists have explored the geosphere over time by going digging deep mines. If you remember when we talked about minerals, we talked about how in South Africa they have gold and diamond mines that are really deep. And so scientists have learned about the inside of the Earth by sending down instruments and bringing up rock samples from wells. Okay, The oil and gas industry has done a great job in our search for oil and natural gas to drive our modern world to drive the study of geology. A lot of geologists will work for oil field companies. And oil fields have, uh, uh, oil companies have drilled wells deeper and deeper into the earth. And the Russians, uh, over time, decided to see how deep they could go. And so they built a well, uh, a drilling rig, up in northern Russia that went about 7.6 miles deep, or 12.3 kilometers below the ground. And that's at the Kola Super Deep Borehole. So here we are at school. And let's go up there. Like I said, it was a drilling experiment that went 12 kilometers or 12, over 12,000 meters below sea level to research the Earth's crust. It was only abandoned about uh, four years ago due to a lack of funding. And this picture right here, this building, this vertical building right here, is actually houses the drilling uh, site itself. And because of a lack of funding, it's falling apart. And as far as, as far as the research is concerned, it's not moving forward. And so to show you where it's at in relation to the rest of the world, here it is in the middle of nowhere, northern Russia. Okay, Here's Finland, Sweden, Norway, Germany, the United Kingdom. Okay, So it's in Europe. And here's Moscow, Russia. So let's go ahead and head on back to class. So let's get finishing up with this lesson. Okay, so like I said, with the Kola Super Deep Borehole, uh, we went 12.3 kilometers below the Earth's surface, but that was only two-tenths of a percent of the way down to the core. And if we look at this map from the uh, webcomic XKCD, yes, that's the same map next, uh, next to my classroom, you can see the red circle is the Kola Borehole. Okay, The Russians just did it just to see how deep they could go. That's how awesome they are. And in relation to, here's some other things, like for example, uh, here's how deep the Titanic was when it sank. Uh, here's sea level right here, okay? And so all the way down here is the lowest natural point on Earth, which is almost 11,000 meters. So the, at the bottom of the Marianas Trench, uh, you're at about 32,000 feet deep, okay? So that's, that's, you know, looking at in relation to the entirety of the Earth. I mean, the Earth is about 6,000 kilometers from the core to the Earth's surface. So, you know, that's, that's a whole lot of meters. And so, you know, as much as we've done research on, we've only been able to barely scratch the surface. So how do we know what's going on at the center of the Earth? Well, we'll talk about it in a second. Because the deeper you go below the Earth's surface, the higher the temperatures get. At the bottom of the Kola Super Deep Borehole, uh, temperatures were about 190 degrees Celsius, or 40 degrees above the temperature needed for plastic deformation of rocks, if you remember our discussion on uh, metamorphic rocks. And just like I said uh, in our lesson on metamorphic rocks, the deeper you go, the higher the pressure is because of the increased weight of the overlying rocks sitting on top of you. Now, like I said, that's limited our research and our uh, exploration of the Earth's core but through direct observations, but through indirect observations when we've been able to look at this, uh, mainly by studying waves generated by earthquakes, P waves and S waves, which we'll talk about uh, in a couple weeks, uh, these waves will travel at different speeds through different materials. And scientists noticed that the speeds of these waves would change at certain depths below Earth's surface. 
And as a result, we were able to figure out that the Earth has different layers through it. So let's go ahead and look at these layers, okay? Uh, and of course, we know that the Earth's outermost area is the crust, below this is the mantle, and then the outer core and the inner core. Okay, so you can see this is a cross section of the Earth. So let's go ahead and let's go back to our notes and let's get going and let's talk about the crust. The crust is the brittle, rocky outer layer of the Earth. Uh, the Earth's outermost layer is similar to the shell of an egg. Okay, so not only is it uh, brittle, but it's also thin. It's in fact the thinnest layer of the Earth. It's only about 35 kilometers deep or 35,000 meters. Now within the crust, we have two types of crust. First one is the continental crust and the other one is the oceanic crust. Continental crust averages about 30 to 50 kilometers thick because it's made of less dense materials like silica and oxygen and things like that. Whereas, uh, whereas oceanic crust is much thinner and it's only five to 10 kilometers deep. Uh, Jap Japanese scientists have attempted to try and drill down through the crust, but it's still going 50,000 kilometers from the bottom of the ocean. And so that's still 20,000 kilometers deeper than the Kola Super Deep Borehole was able to go. So, so that's the crust, okay? So this is only about 35 kilometers deep. And so let's talk about the next layer, which is the mantle. The mantle is the thick middle layer of the Earth. In fact, it's the thickest layer of the Earth. It's about 3,000 kilometers thick. Because of differing pressures, the rocks in the mantle are denser than crustal rocks. Okay, if you think about if you think about oil and water, the lighter oil will float on top of the water because the oil itself is much less dense. Just like that example of oil and water, the less dense rocks rose up to the surface of the earth was formed and throughout its history. Now scientists will group the mantle into four different layers. Okay, and so let's look at these right here. Okay, so we have the oceanic crust, the continental crust, which is one and two right here. And then we have three, which is the upper mantle. Within the upper mantle, we have three parts. At the very top, we have a brittle solid crust, which with the continental and oceanic crust, we'll call the lithosphere. Okay, so the lithosphere is the topmost layer of the mantle. The rock, these are solid rocks, and they'll oftentimes interact with the crust. And occasionally, rocks from the, lithos the bottom part of the lithosphere, the very top of the mantle, will get pushed up to the surface. We found mantle rocks at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean near the Cape Verde Islands off the coast of Africa, and actually really, really old mantle rocks, uh, probably over a, a several hundred million years old, we found in eastern Canada in the Canadian Shield, which if you remember from metamorphic rocks, so where large amounts of metamorphic rocks are located. So that's the lithosphere. And, be and below that, we have the rocks in the mantle second layer. The temperatures get so high that they begin to melt and become plastic, which means they get, begin to flow. Once again, connecting back to metamorphic rocks, you know at above 150 degrees Celsius, some rocks will begin being able to undergo plastic deformation, which means they'll form. Okay. Uh, now, just because I say they form doesn't mean if we were to magically dig a hole all the way down into this layer, we'd be able to see them move. However, the speed which they move is only about the same rate that your fingernails grow. So that's pretty slow. So we can't really see with the naked eye. But based on calculations of seismic waves and stuff like that, we figure it at about that speed. Now, this layer is what we call the astenosphere. Okay, this is the astenosphere. And let's go back and let's look at this. So the asthenosphere is right in this vicinity, okay? And the lowest two layers of the mantle, they're below the asthenosphere, they're not liquid. In fact, they're solid, okay, because of the high amounts of pressure of that. And the upper layer of the mantle and the lower layer of the mantle for the largest part of the Earth's layers. Like I said, the mantle itself is about 3,000 kilometers thick. So let's move on to the next part. Let's talk about the Earth's core. The Earth's core is the dense metallic center of the planet. The central part of the Earth's planet is made of metal. Okay, when the planet was young, these dense materials melted and were pulled by gravity toward Earth's center. Uh, whenever we talk about the Earth Moon Sun system and we talk about this is later on in the school year and how the Earth was formed, according to scientists, uh, you saw that 
particles came together and they came, became clumped together and gravity started pulling them toward the center. And so like we already established with the mantle and the crust, the lighter the elements uh, stayed on the, at the top, they formed the core, the heavier ones formed the mantle, and the heaviest and densest uh, elements formed the core. And the core is mainly made of nickel and iron. And Earth's core has a outer layer that's liquid and a l l inner layer rather that's solid. Okay. In fact, scientists, some scientists believe, though this is hotly disputed, that the uh, inner core is actually made of a single iron crystal. But uh, scientists have made direct measurements based on seismic waves, seeing that the individual crystals themselves are a minimum in the core of one kilometer in size, okay? So one kilometer in size, it's about one and a half miles. So imagine a single crystal that's a mile and a half in size. Now, the outer core itself, because of its pressure and its temperature, actually makes it liquid. It's plastic, much like the, much like the, uh, much like in the mantle in the asthenosphere. Okay, so the outer core, because it's liquid, will actually spin a little bit faster than the rest of the Earth. And the core spinning and this differential in speed causes a, a magnetic field to form around the Earth. Okay, so the Earth has a magnetic field, just like a magnet, which we'll talk about in a second. So let's go ahead and let's look at our detailed layers of the Earth. So, uh, 35 kilometers thick is the Earth's crust, 35 to 2585 is the Earth's mantle, and then the rest of the way, so 2270 is the core, and 1216 is the inner core to give 6,371 kilometers as the radius of the Earth. So from the exact center of the Earth all the way out to the outermost point of the crust, that is the radius of the Earth. So let's talk about this magnetic field. Earth is a magnetic field, which if you've ever looked at a compass, you know that that's the case. Like I told you, the movement of molten iron in the Earth's core, the liquid outer core, the solid inner core, act like a giant bar magnet with one pole near the top of the planet and one pole near the bottom. And this map is a declination model of the magnetic field of the Earth. And it shows, in particular right here, this is the southern magnetic pole. Okay, It's due south of Australia and Japan, but it's a, just above Antarctica. And the northern magnetic pole is about right here where I've clicked on my mouse. Uh, it's not exactly on this mouth, uh, on there. But these lines indicate how a compass will show the difference between the real North Pole and the magnetic North Pole, or the real South Pole and the magnetic South Pole. And as you can see here in Louisiana, where we're at, we're almost at the zero declination line. So for all intents and purposes, if you have a magnet, when it's pointing north, it's pointing exactly toward, it's pointing exactly toward the, uh, the magnetic North Pole, which is aligned up with the Northern Pole. And these differences, East and West, uh, you have to turn your compass a certain amount of degrees in order for it to line up. So this establishes that Earth is a magnetic field, and we can measure it using a compass and things of that nature. Now, over time, Earth's magnetic field has varied in strength and direction. It's gotten stronger, it's gotten weaker. The magnetic poles have even flipped. Now, it's not like we go out one day, my compass is pointing north, and the next day it's pointing south. It's happened over a couple thousands year, of years, and this has happened over time in the past. Uh, so, but in addition, Earth's magnetic field, in addition to telling us where north and south and all that is, and you help people from getting lost, Earth's magnetic field will protect the planet against cosmic rays and charged particles from the sun. It creates a gigantic, mag ginormous magnetic field that will bounce particles up. Okay. And the outer part of Earth's magnetic field is what we call the magnetosphere. And we'll talk about this in more detail when we talk about the Sun, Moon, and Earth system, when we talk about astronomy and also Earth's atmosphere. Like I, like I just said, it'll interact with cosmic rays and particles flying from the Sun, charged particles, you know, ions, you know, I, uh, atoms and electric charge, and it'll bounce them away. And it might trap some of them too. And so if we look at this diagram of the magnetosphere and the Sun, we see this in action. The sun throws out particles that they call solar wind, and the, this is the magnetosphere right here, okay, this whole big area. And so some of it will get caught, it'll get trapped in here, and it'll actually form the aurora borealis or the northern light. If you've ever seen those, uh, 
Occasionally in the northern United States, when there's a particularly large amount of solar particles coming toward Earth, it'll come down there, but mainly you can see them in Alaska and in, uh, and in rather, Antarctica in the south, the Aurora Australis. But the magnetic field will bounce off all of these particles, and it keeps us safe from radiation that could kill us or cause damage to living things. So without the magnetosphere, life wouldn't exist as we know it here on Earth. Okay, so that's all the parts of the Earth, the core, the mantle, the crust, the magnetosphere, and all this stuff. So let's go ahead and let's review our questions we were supposed to answer. By the end of this lesson, you would be able to answer the following questions. What's the interior layers of the Earth? The mantle, there's an upper mantle and lower mantle. And then there's a core, there's an outer core, and there's the inner core. And also what evidence indicates that Earth has a solid inner core and a liquid outer core? Well, evidence from earthquakes. And this evidence was the changes in speed of seismic waves proved that the core consisted of a solid inner core and a liquid outer core. The changes in speed showed us that there were different elemental materials in different states of matter that helped us understand that. So that's your lesson, Chapter 2, Lesson 2. Hope you're able to get all your notes down. As always, if you have any questions, comments, feel free to leave them in the YouTube section. Uh, and anyone out there watching it, also feel free to leave comments, questions, things like that. Thanks for your time.